Kazakh show. I'm the Trev. It's too sweet. Anyway, going over my division predictions. If you remember, I made them way back when. Link's right there. If you want to review yourself on that. You're going to see how well I predicted divisions this season. And if you know anything about my predictions, they're, they're very hit and miss. Not nearly as bad in the regular season as they are in the playoffs, but we give it the old college try anyways. But let's go over it. So if you didn't watch the original video or you need a refresher, my division predictions for the Atlantic went a little bit like this. And here's how it actually went. So right off the hop, I got four out of eight, which isn't bad. Toronto and Boston, I think, were obvious gimmies. There was no way Toronto was winning the division, and there was no way Boston was going to miss the playoffs. At least not yet. Whereas the two I got right in the bottom four, Detroit and Ottawa, I didn't think Ottawa was going to finish last in the division. I also didn't think Montreal was going to finish last in the division and in the league. But it happened nonetheless. Buffalo, I kind of thought was going to get better. But let's go over it a bit. Am I at all surprised Montreal finished last in the league? A little bit. I honestly didn't think not having Price and not having Weber was going to hurt them that bad, but, you know, apparently they're both on the cusp of retirement, and, you know, being they were cup contenders last season, yeah, it was a shortened season and all, and they probably wouldn't have made it if it was a full 82, but I would have thought they did a lot better, you know, with or without Weber and Price, but they got a lot of work to do for next season, and... You know, with the draft lottery being in their favor, although it doesn't always materialize, you know, maybe they'll actually be onto something good. Ottawa's getting better, and that's a good thing. I mean, how long till they crack the playoffs is ultimately the question, you know, but they're at least getting better. That's promising. It'd be interesting to see what Detroit does from here. Ultimately, like I said in the video I made before this, they're going in a new direction, so they need a new coach. And I'm sure there's lots of other things that they'll be doing during the offseason to build themselves into a stronger Detroit Red Wings, but we'll see come off season. Buffalo did a lot better than I want to give them credit for. And I think a lot of that was getting rid of Jack Eichel as soon as they did, which reminds me there will be a 10 bold predictions review video. Coming at some point in the future. Sky's the limit now. I mean, power's on the team. So that's a great thing. Dalene's really starting to come into his own. And as soon as they figure out what's, what's going on in the net, they could be really, really good. Poor Boston, though. I mean, unless they find a fountain of youth or manage to be able to stay with the times and keep a hold of some guys who don't request trades it could be it could be a couple seasons without a playoff run but for now no no they still have Bergeron they still have Marchand they're still okay Tampa Bay obviously they were going to make the playoffs obviously I think finishing third really doesn't bother them as much as going for a third straight Stanley Cup will <clears throat> and we'll get into my playoff predictions in a completely different video I promise but I think it's merely just a formality at this point. Make the playoffs and then run. And this is where the fun for Toronto begins. You know, I mean, if you know your history, they haven't passed the first round in a very long time. So we'll see what comes out of that. But like I said, I didn't think they were ultimately going to win the division. And they didn't. They were behind by seven points. 
but I don't know, I mean, it's hard to deny the Matthews Marner to Varus line any further at this point, especially if Matthews and Marner are both hitting career highs and aren't even in the prime of their career. Toronto could be scary good. And then there's your President's Trophy winners, which we did a video on. You can follow that link if you want. A bit surprised that they finished with the President's Trophy. Much less 58 wins. That's fifth most in league history. Are they are they for real? Am I going to be making a video about them in June? I mean, ultimately, time will tell, but I honestly didn't think Florida was going to finish first. Like I said, I, I picked them to finish third. I, I knew they were making the playoffs, given the talent they have. There was no way they weren't making the playoffs, but... President's Trophy winners. That's almost scary. So really, I mean, the top four is where your ultimate tough choices were. And I mean, is it any real coincidence that those four are the four that made the playoffs? Probably not. But it was fun to watch the race while it was going on. I'll give it that much. But I don't know, for me, the fact that I ultimately picked half the division right. That's no small feat in itself, so pat on the back for Trev. Yay. There were some surprises, I'm not going to lie, but it was fun to watch a full 82 games in this division. I'll say that much. So that's another one of Trev's hockey shows. I want to thank you for tuning in. Don't think I don't appreciate the gesture, especially at this point it's a great thing for everybody so let's keep the good times rolling right give me a like since you're here while you're at it if you want to and you know you do you know i want you to and you know subscribe makes you feel good so let's do that hit that red button socials in the description down below so being this is the first next is the metro but either way in the meantime in between time, be looking for more years from Trev. Later.